Hi, my name's Alan and welcome to another episode of Affinity TV. Today we're going to be looking at Affinity Designer and using the Artboard tool within inside of the application to create some slides for Apple's Keynote and create a simple animation. Now I'm just going to switch over to Keynote for one moment. Now Keynote does have some tools in here like the shapes and you can go ahead and use Keynote to create some of these elements but it doesn't have the same power and flexibility that Affinity Designer has. And of course, Keynote isn't a graphic design application, even though it has some of those elements inside of it. It is primarily designed for creating presentations. Now, over in the Documents icon and the Documents pane here, the presentation slide size I've chosen is widescreen, so I just need to make note of that for when I'm inside of Affinity Designer. Now, let's just switch back. So I've got a new document here. I've chosen web and 1920 by 1080, 16 by nine. So now this will match up with what I'm gonna create later on inside of Keynote. And I'll also choose create artboard. So it will turn this document into an artboard for me. And I'm gonna click cancel because I've already got one created. Now I could go ahead and create multiple slides with inside of Affinity Designer using the Artwall tool. And their true power really lies with the, the flexibility that they have. Now, I'm only starting with one and I will create another in, in a moment. Um, and I will show you the afterwards why I'm starting with one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start creating some elements just by using the rectangle tool. And I'm just gonna drag and create a shape on the screen. Now I'm gonna change that sort of to a darker gray color, someone like that. It doesn't matter too much at the moment. Now I'm gonna switch over to the pen tool and I'm just gonna click over the left hand side, hold down the shift key to constrain and click over on the right hand side. And so I can have that thin line going across. Now I'm gonna do the same from the top to the bottom. Now, for some of you guys, you may have already worked out what I'm creating. For those who don't know, it will all be revealed very shortly. And let's head back to the shape tool again. And so click and drag a rectangle right on the screen. Size doesn't matter too much at the moment. And let's just fill that with black. And I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and drag this out to duplicate this three times. Now, I'm just gonna align these up a little bit. Now, the alignment doesn't matter too much in a moment because I'm gonna spend most of my time sorting this out inside of Keynote, but it's nice just to tidy this up. So, rather than go through and create all the elements inside of Affinity, I've already got some elements done. So I'm gonna just open up my layers panel here and just turn on some of these other elements and just group these together. So this background I've got here and these two lines, I'm just gonna to group together and select them and press the shortcut command G and let's double click and rename this to background. And let's just turn on the rest of these layers and rearrange them. There we go. So with this table here, all I did was I, I used a pen tool and I drew an outline of the table and then use the fill. And then I use some of the layer effects to add an outer shadow and I use the bevel and emboss. If I just zoom in a bit on the table, you can see I've got the shadow hair going on and a slight little bevel on the edges of the table hair. So I created this beforehand just because I wanted to try and keep this video as, as short as possible. And it took a little while just to get the table right. But if you guys want, you can go ahead and design that as well. And I'm just gonna just bring these down a bit. Okay, so like in the beginning, I said that I was only creating one artboard. And there's a reason why I didn't duplicate it in the beginning is because if I did, I would have created an empty slide or an empty artboard. Whereas in this case, I actually wanna duplicate this for my second slide. So I'm just gonna close this up. And actually, let's just make sure this background is actually within inside of this slide. 
there we go and just zoom in so I can see the whole artboard I'm going to hold down the alt key and click and drag to duplicate that let's rename this to slide 2 now I'm going to open up slide 2 and get rid of some of these elements because I don't need it for the second slide let's get rid of these screens let's get rid of this genus bar logo and I'm going to open up the genius bar and get rid of this rectangle for the background there. I'll just close this back up and create another layer. Now for slide two, I need to import some more elements. And of course, it being an Apple store, it wouldn't be right without some IMAX. So let's use the place image tool and let's bring this element in. Uh, just zoom in so I can uh, see if I can place this on the table here. Uh, now I'm going to use the rectangle tool again. And let's just drag a shape out to cover the screen here. And let's make this white. And let's just resize this so it covers. And let's turn off this stroke. Because I don't need that on there. And let's just resize it so it fits the screen. There we go. Let's zoom back out. Now for this layer here for the iMac, I'm just going to rename it. Now I want two of these in here, so while I've got this layer selected, I'm going to press the shortcut Command J to duplicate. And let's rename this iMac 2. And let's hold down the shift key and drag that out so it fits on the second half of the screen. Select the first one again, and there's an element I want to play so it fits on the screen here. And for this second iMac, you could do something for the first slide here for the genius bar here, but I'm, I'm happy with that as it is. So let's select this iMac and layer and use the place image tool again. Let's import some more elements and the second iMac layer again. I'm going to use the place image tool to place an image. And I'm going to select these two together and just resize them so they fit inside of the screen. Let's make them a bit smaller. And let's drag them over so they fit inside the center of the screen here. And let's just make this one a bit smaller. And just line them up so they, so they fit inside of the screen. There we go. Let's just look at what we've got so far for slide one. I've got the Genius Bar with the three screens, the Genius Bar logo and the Genius Bar itself. And for the second slide, I've got a table here. And again, I've got two iMacs with a screen saver on them. And again, of course, I'm using the Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo logos. Okay, so let me just zoom out so I can see both side by side. There we go, I've got my two slides for, for Keynote now. So all I need to do now is use the export persona up here and export each of these elements. Now, because I've got the background repeated twice for both slides, I won't need to export that twice. And because I've got the screen here three times, I will only need to export one of them. And the same thing for the, the Genius Bar logo, I won't need to export both of them. I can just export one. So rather than spending time going through and exporting all of this while you're watching, I'm gonna go ahead and export all of these and then I'm gonna be right back with you. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've exported all of the elements from within inside of Affinity Designer. And I've created two folders on my desktop for slide one and slide two. And inside of them are all of those elements. So let's switch over to Keynote. So with Keynote, I've chosen a wide theme and I've just chosen this white background and the wide's now gonna match up with the settings I've used from Affinity Designer. So I don't need these text box elements here so I can select them and hit the delete key to get rid of them. Now what I wanna do now is fill this background with the background I created from Affinity. So I'm in the format pane and I've got the slide layout here. Now by default it's set to color fill. So let's click and change that to image fill and then some new options appear and I want to click choose. Now let's navigate to my folders and select the background layer and click open. 
and make sure that's set to original size. Now, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and select this slide and right click and duplicate. So that's slide one and slide two. Let's go back to slide one, come up to the menu bar and click insert and down to choose. And now we're gonna select those elements from within the slide one folder and click on insert. Now all I need to do now is move these around and line them up to, I'm happy with them. Now the one great thing I do like about Kino is if I hold down the option key and click and drag to duplicate the screen and again, as I move these around, you can see I get these yellow arrows in the middle to tell me that these screens are now equal distance apart, which is awesome. Let's drag and just move it over a bit. There we go. And then let's do the same thing for the Genius Bar logos and let's just line them up. There we go. And uh, so slide one is done. So before I go ahead and add some animation to these, I'm gonna to go to slide two, back to the insert menu in the menu bar, choose over to slide two, and the same thing, let's insert these elements here. Again, I'm just gonna line these up. So now I've imported the element for slide two and I've done slide one of Genius Bar, we can go ahead and start adding some simple animation. So for slide one, I want the screen to pop on first, then the Genius Bar logos, and then the Genius Bar itself. So I'm gonna select the first screen, come over to Animate, add an effect, and there's a ton of options to choose from. If I hover over on the right-hand side, I can click on the word Preview, and it gives me a little preview of what they look like. Now I know I want move in for this one, so I click on move in, and by default, it's set to left to right. I actually want that to come from the top. And the same for the second screen. And click on add effect, move in, change that to top to bottom again, and the same for the third one. Now, what I actually want to happen is, because if I press play, all of these screens come on one by one um, every time I click the space bar, let's press escape. I actually want them to come on all together with a slight delay between the second and third screen. So if I come down to build all down the bottom right of my screen, select the second screen, let's just move this up. So down here where it says start, on click, I'm gonna change that to with build one and add a slight delay. And the same for the third screen. Change that to with build one, add a slight delay. And let's move this out of the way again. And click preview. There we go, so I'm happy with that. Head over to the, the Genius Bar logos. Add an effect again. And I wanna choose scale. And let's change that to down. Preview that and then the genius bar itself, add an effect and move in. I actually want this one to move from the bottom to top. So if I click play now, and we're gonna see how this plays through for the first slide. So we go, the screens come on, genius bar, logos, and the table pops up. Cool, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the second slide. For this one, actually, I want the, the table to pop in from the left side of the screen, and then the IMAX pop down onto them from the top. So if I select the table first of all, click on add an effect, move in left to right, that's fine. Select the first IMAX and add an effect, move in again, and let's change this to top to bottom, and the same for the second one. So similar to what I did with the, the first slide, where I had these coming on by themselves with a slight delay. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second slide. So again, down to build all down the bottom right of the screen. Select the second iMac and change that to with build two, add a slight delay, click on preview. There we go. Uh, so if I start with the first slide and click play and go through, Now, 
one thing that I noticed was when it got to the second slide, the table didn't automatically come on for me. So actually what I want to happen is as this goes from this slide to the second one, I want the second table to automatically come in. So again, I can come down to build order, select the table and change it to after transition. Now if I go back to the first slide to add an actual transition from the first slide to the second one. Again, so similar to the animation we had for each of these elements, you do have a multiple choice here for how you get from one slide to the other. Now for me, now if I scroll down and let's see, I actually want reflection here. And the start transition, at the moment it's set to click, so I'll have to press the space bar for me to get from that first slide to the second. I want that to happen automatically. So there we go. Let's play this back one more time. So there you go guys, that's how you can create a simple um, but nice animation inside of Apple's Keynote, starting with Affinity Designer. Give it a go, let me know how you get on. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask and hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.